Hey guys, it is Dom here. I just had a wonderful chat with uh, Fuzzy guitarist Rich Ward about the UK dates that they're doing coming up. Obviously some advice as well for emerging guitarists because Rich is the Duke of Metal after all. So this was a great, uh, great fun. Love Rich's enthusiasm and, uh, and I wish him and Fuzzy every success. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys soon. Dude, I've got to ask you, obviously you have been through quite a lot in the industry. You've been obviously fuzzy, but also stuck mojo before that. Um, in your experience, uh, you know, all of the years you've spent in the music industry, how do you define success? That is my first question to you and a big one. How do you define success as a person and as an artist if they're two different things? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's... it's uh... For me, it's have a good gig, um, make a good record, um, you know, have a good rehearsal with the guys uh, after the show, find a way to keep my band feeling like a family, you know, those kinds of things. Um, it used to be um, play bigger venues, sell more tickets, sell more albums. Um, and I think that just came from years and years of um, uh, you know, being goal oriented and, and wanting to keep climbing up the mountain. And I, I'm still that way and that I want to be, but my goals are more, uh, based on personal, um, uh, kind of milestones. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's why we hired a new, uh, producer for, for Fozzie after, you know, like, 15 years of doing it our way, Chris and I, and the guys, we, we finally decided let's bring somebody else in. And part of it comes from being um, a fan of um, bands like Metallica and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, who it, later in their career um, were able to find producers who got a lot out of them. You yeah. know what I mean? Who helped to kind of push them and see um, like a coach would from the sideline kind of say, hey, you guys are great at what you're doing. Here are some tactics. Here's some ways that you can work together. Here's some ways that you can get more out of yourself and um, and be better at what you do. And so I think that was kind of our, I think that's kind of been my motto moving forward is just uh, besting myself from each album. Um, and, and, you know, another thing is, is um, I'm 53 years old. Um, that's, I, 20 years ago, if you were 53, there was no career for you unless you were Tina Turner. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the, you were a serious legacy artist and now thank God for bands like Metallica, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, who still feel fresh. They're putting new material out. They're still putting on incredible concerts. And I think more than anything is um, they become um, uh, kind of an inspiration for artists as we get older to not feel like we have to shift into some kind of legacy artist um, mm -hmm. vibe. We can really continue to see ourselves. And that's why every day I get up and I do yoga. I do my Diamond Dallas paid DDP yoga. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the afternoons, I go for a run. I practice guitar every day. I don't take anything for granted. Um, there's never been this time. I see this. The other thing is a lot of my own goals are based on now getting a chance to see my heroes as right. they age. Right. Yeah. And some, some like Metallica and Iron Maiden keep this level of excellence which is incredible and then there are other bands who when you go see them you say wow it feels like a bit of a step back from where i remember them mm -hmm. and i never want a fan to leave the show having a discussion with their friends going yeah they were better the last time i saw them it was like that's heartbreaking yeah. so for me it's wanting to be that that guy um mm -hmm. you know really working hard to be the best that i can be Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I mean, from what you were saying there, is legacy then a dirty word for you? Because obviously you have achieved a lot. Do you think about legacy a lot, your legacy, or is it something that just doesn't cross your mind at all? 
No, because I've made a lot of mistakes and you just can't go back on those things, right. you know? Yeah. I mean, I, um, my priorities have changed over the years, the way that I've interacted with my bandmates and interacted with my managers and promoters, um, down to stupid things that, um, they, they annoy, um, some of my bandmates, but after the show, I clean up the dressing room, like, and the reason I do it is because I know somebody else has to do it. Yeah. And it's like one of those little things that, um, it's, it's a bigger, it's not only taking kind of pride in myself and my bandmates of wanting to, um, not feel like we're falling into some, uh, cliche where you, you just destroy the dressing room and w go on. Cause somebody else has got that, or you mess up your, your hotel room or, you know, I, I think more than anything is, is, um, is building a reputation, not just on being the best band and the best guitar player, but also giving respect to the opening bands, giving respect to the people who you tour with, your bus driver. Like those are other ways to that are almost just as important in other ways of shaking the hand of the local crew guys for busting their ass for you all day long at the at the, the gig. Um, and so and it, you, you, nobody just because you say you're going to do it doesn't mean every day I'm, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm a hundred percent, but uh, these are things I'm making conscious efforts of. And part of it is to seeing the ugly side the ugly underbelly of rock and roll and seeing how other bands uh, act. And I, I go, man, that, that looks ugly. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the opposite. Yeah. Um, and a cool, I mean, it's, you know, Fozzy has been my main band now for, 20 years and you know we made some fantastic records over the years that i'm really proud of and yet i think the newest record that we just made is our best and a lot of that is not down to me i'd love to take credit for it but it's it's that process of continuing to get better at how we work together as a band getting better at working with our new producer mm. uh working with a new label and and People always like to try to think that it comes down to one person or two people, but being in a band is a group effort, just like being a professional football team. It really is. It's like you can have fantastic superstars, but if you've got one superstar on the field and 10 people not doing their work, you will not win. And it really comes and it and you could have 11 superstars that don't work well together. It's all about chemistry. How do you how does the team work? And I think um, so to to be to do a super long answer to your first question, you know, my goals are really uh, to improve every year on the things that I keep learning from and uh, and keep, you know, and, and again, Chris and I have been together since 1999, Chris Jericho, the singer yeah. of Fozzie cool. and our and we're still getting better. We're yeah. like the two of us learning how we work together. Um and he's been sending me, you know, he, he had an injury, uh, I guess it was about six weeks now, maybe it was seven weeks ago in a match where he had, uh, it's just one of these freak accidents that happened during a match he had with CM Punk mm -hmm. and he damaged his throat. And there was just like, if you were to tear a muscle in your knee, there was, um, fluid that had oh, built up on right. his, on his vocal cords. Yeah. And there was no vibration. So he sounded like he sat, yeah. had that croaky thing. Oh, yeah. And, and so now like a couple of times a week, he's sending me uh, audio messages of him singing and, you know, him working hard to get better. And it's like, he has nothing to prove. He's Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of the top wrestlers of all time and uh, is now a gold selling artist. And yet he's doing the same thing that I'm doing, which is every day trying to make improvements and be better. So it's, yeah. it's, it's been really cool for us. That's awesome, man. I've got a couple more questions before we finish. And I, I want to go back to your previous answer there. You know, you yeah. mentioned how much you've learned. What would be a message that you would impart to anybody who's maybe listening to you these days and all the things you've done and goes, well, I can't be Rich Ward. I'm never going to get to that level of success. I'm never going to do those things. And they don't have the confidence that, you know, you have you have been able to exhibit in your career. What would be your message and a bit of wisdom for any fans of yours who, you know, 
uh, maybe they're struggling for that self-belief and that confidence that you exhibit so well readily in your music and, and, and the things that you do? Um, well, the first thing is, is commitment is the most important thing. There's tons of fantastic musicians and singers who will never be successful because they're not willing to do what it takes. Yeah. It really comes down to um, how hard am I willing to work? And that's, that's, that is more true in the in the entertainment business than it is in almost any other place. Yeah. Uh, um, Tom Cruise is not the best actor, he, but he has the biggest movies and he has the biggest fan base. He works hard. You know, I mean, every day of his life is getting up and deciding to be the best Tom Cruise that he can be. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, like it's why like he's almost 60 and he's in fantastic shape and he insists on still doing his own stunts, practical stunts, not, you know, not CGI. I mean, he's, yeah. he, he's committed to being the great, the greatest. Um, and I, I would say to any guitar player who lacks um, or singer, drummer, anyone in the, in the music business who really is a passion for music, I would just say, get up in the morning and every morning, just thank God that you woke up because a lot of people didn't wake up. And then after that, do whatever it takes to be the best version of you as possible. I play guitar every day. I mean, it's it, the same way that I go to the gym. It has to be a routine. Not everybody wants to is inspired to play guitar. Oh, I'm going to write some fantastic song today. It's not the way it works. The way it works is it's a routine. This is what I do. You go to the gym, you exercise, you eat good foods, the things that you do that if you want to improve, if you want to like be a, a better version of yourself, and you play guitar every day. And some days I don't just sit down with a little tick, 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 da, 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 da. I don't do that. Sometimes it's just me sitting down for two hours watching the Formula One race, doing scales and practicing, or I'm watching uh, some something on TV that I don't have to concentrate on. Yeah. You know, it's just like ambient, whatever stuff, nature. Yeah. Uh, it can be a soccer game because then you've got two 45-minute halves. And so you've got an hour and a half of time where you can watch, but you can still be doing, just like you can do press-ups while you're watching to, or listen to music. Yeah. Um and so, but every day I would just say, stay committed to it and you'll just out hustle everybody else because the people, if I was to hire, if someone said, um, your bass player is quitting, I wouldn't look for the most talented bass player. I would look for the bass player who is the most committed because yeah. they're the people who aren't going to quit on you, who aren't going to have problems. And they're always going to be a reason why they can't come to rehearsal or they can't make it to the studio. Like you want somebody that wants to be there and wants to hustle. And those are the people that get the jobs every time. And then the other thing I would just say is um, um, be your, your own worst critic, but don't, don't put a lot of credence in other people uh, telling you you suck. Because there's a whole social media platform that uh, survives on telling other people they suck. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've made 21 albums, and every time I release an album, <laughs> there are a lot of people ready to tell me it sucks. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, I always tell people, it's like, somebody thought The Shining sucked. Somebody thought you know, Back to the Future sucked. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, man. They, it's just it, people have different tastes They're, and then some people just want to wind you up. So yeah. the main thing to do is just be the, be, do what it takes for you to have your own confidence and the confidence that doesn't come from people patting you on the back, the confidence that comes from knowing that you're putting in the work and yeah. that you are seeing the progress and that you compare yourself against your peers. Yeah. I know that I'll never be as good as Zach Wilde or Dimebag or Eddie Van Halen, but my goals are to be as good as I can be and strive to be a hero like them, you know, yeah. um, I, and just the same way that, you know, most people won't be as good an actor as Anthony Hopkins. But Tom Cruise has proven that you don't have to be as good as Anthony Hopkins to be an amazingly successful person in that business. Yeah, man. It's an interesting point. I know you've got other things to do, other interviews to do, but I do want to... No, I've got time. I've got uh, time. I've got right. time. Okay, man. Well, I want to squeeze in something because you have um, a UK tour coming up and obviously a legion of fans that 
that respond to Fozzy and respond to the tunes, but also respond to you as people. You know, you've got a good relationship with your fans. So what are some of your favourite memories here in the UK? And what are you most looking forward to about this tour, being able to play those songs and, and uh, make people happy as you are known to do? Thanks. I mean, I, I, I love the UK. Um, and the, and specifically, like I've, I've had this love affair with the UK because my father's in English. He grew up in Kent. Um, he came to America in 1962 to try to follow his dreams to be a golf pro. And, um, but we would go back to see my grandparents, uh, two or three times a year. Um, and, and then on, so I, I kind of, felt like part of my culture was rooted in, um, in, you know, in the UK. And then the other part was all my favorite bands growing up, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath, like all of those big influential bands that really moved the needle for me when I was younger were all British bands. And so the first time I got to come over and play, in Britain, it meant everything to me because, first of all, I felt like the part of my family heritage. I was able to, you know, and the other part of it is, too, is like I grew up pre-internet. I grew up pre, I mean, MTV was my view of the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's I grew up in a somewhat of a small town. So the only way that I knew anything about other music and other musical cultures and things that were going on was looking at this square TV window into the world of music. And, and there was something magical about it. And I remember that Stuck Mojo came over for the first time in 96. And in 1996, MTV uh, Europe voted, voted us best live band of 1996 on Headbangers Ball and it was like, it was incredible for us. And that, so for me, that was like my first big moment. Mm. And then we we were lucky to come back and play, uh, you know, Download, uh, you know, like Nebworth, like all these classic in incredible um, festivals that I had grown up reading about in rock magazines. And so for us, always coming back is special. I know that it seems a little cheesy to say this, but like every day, the fact that I can get up and go find an English breakfast and um, or go to Greg's. Yeah, Greg's you know, like, it's, yeah, yeah. You, they're like, there's things about going to a different country. Yeah. For I, I know it's probably the same thing for, um, you know, people from the UK coming to America. There's yeah. certain things that are feel cool because it's it's not like what you're used to every day. Um, so for me, being able to do those things and, um, you know, I, it's special, you know, I mean, yeah. when you tell a 13 year old Rich Ward that one day he's going to be going to England to play uh, and going to France to play and Australia to play, I would. I would have more believed you if you'd had said you're going to be an astronaut and go to <laughs> Mars. You know what Amazing. I mean? That seemed yeah. more reasonable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so for me, it's just a dream come true to be able to do this. Um, and I do find that the, I do find that the fans, um, and maybe it's because being in an American band, we tour more here. Mm. So people have more familiarity and they get to see us more often. When we tour in the UK, the the audiences are mad. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's really special, um, and we we have some of the best gigs of of Fozzie's career have all been in the UK. I can't wait to bring Guardians of the Jukebox over to the UK because um, half the songs we play are um, are British songs because Guardians is a uh, is a tribute to the eighties. So and you know the. America and the, and the UK were in an arms race to be the most important band, you know, a, a birthplace of yeah. music from the 80s and still continue to do that. I mean, really, if you look at the, the history of music, you know, our two our yeah. two countries have have really been the birthplace and of some tremendous movements and some of the most important pieces of rock and roll.
Yeah, man, absolutely. I'm so excited for you guys to come over because I know a lot of people have a great relationship with the band. Uh, before we finish up, man, I could talk to you for hours, but I'm going to give the floor to you. Is there anything you feel like we've missed? Is there anything you want to plug? Obviously, you have new songs. You have this tour. Anything you're, you've got going on that you want to share with people? Well, just that um, it's exciting for us, this tour in particular, because we just had to cancel both legs of our U.S. tour. Uh, because of Chris's injury and it was heartbreaking for us um, because first of all getting up to wake having the opportunity to wake up and play every day in a new city is is the dream I mean yeah. it really is so the fact that we haven't played since April May proper um, and we've had the the disappointments this is our first tour back and uh, Chris had this great idea of going back and playing some older songs that we haven't played in a while and to really treat this tour special because um, you, we learned during the pandemic that you can't take anything for granted. No. Every day is special. Um, yeah. Every gig is special. So let's keep that in mind and really focus in on this tour being amazing. We've got 10 shows and let's just have, 10 of the best, most incredible events that we can possibly have. And just remember, we're not promised tomorrow. So let's just, let's leave it all on the table. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Rich, it's been a pleasure, mate. And again, I know you've got other things to do, other interviews, but honestly, dude, cheers for your time. I really appreciate Thank it. You. And uh, look forward, look forward to seeing you guys back over here. And, and obviously every success, mate. Love your enthusiasm. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you so much. It's great talking with you. Thanks for making time for me. It means a lot.